Have you seen this guy? What, the Stegodon? Yeah, the Sega Mom. Look at him. He's hilarious. We're going to have to get used to it. I'm putting three of those in the new Seraphon army, dude. <laughs> dude, what? Look at his face. He looks like he's crossfading and I just asked him what he wants on his pizza. I mean, yeah, okay, fair play, but like, that's all there is available. Like, I can't just conjure new models out of thin air. Uh... Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what do you think I should make? Well, anything. Anything but this. What's up my movers and shakers, this is Dave and this once again is MS Paints. And we're back a little bit earlier than expected with this project, but this is the first entry into the new Seraphon army that I've been working on. Mama Pier Grande. She is built from a D&D Tarask model. The Total War Warhammer 2 Howder assets from the Lizardmen army. And of course the Skink Riders donated by Lost Kingdom miniatures that I got in the last video. Along with a few spare knickknacks that I had lying around from like the multiple start collecting boxes for Seraphon that I bought. And just as a warning, this is a solid 7 out of 10 on the MS Paints fiddly scale. So, like with all my stuff, take it just as far as you want or you feel you're comfortable with. Uh, but this one is, it is pretty tricky, but it is something that I just wanted to make um, while I still can. Apologies in advance because my huge cranium dome is absolutely in the way for some of this video, but any obsections where the stuff is obscured, I'll put a list on the screen or I'll say exactly what I'm doing. Usually it's just paint recipes and you can kind of figure out the rest of yourself common sense like. But other than that, I'm just going to dive straight into it. Assembly is fairly straightforward. I'm going to clip off all the garbage that you get when you 3D print stuff. Uh, these are just the support structures It's necessary. And I'm going to get as clean a surface as possible. And I printed these fairly awkwardly to prevent supports being on as few visible surfaces as possible. When a support is attached to a resin model, it tends to leave little dimples on the print itself where the supports have been broken off. There's a few here and there that I've left over, but I'll be running some milliput over most of them to smooth them out, and it works for the most part did leave a couple on the dinosaurs armor plating because I thought well it kind of looks like dents from attacks and that's kind of how I'm going to justify it, maybe justify my laziness. <laughs> I found that having left the resin pieces to cure for a few weeks that they change shape slightly in places and drastically in others and I needed a little carving here and there to slot them into place properly. This is a, this is a common problem in UV 3D printing um, in that the more time that the print has out in the sun or in natural light, the more it constricts to its maximum. So there's always going to be some shrinkage and that's just kind of standard I guess at this stage. The howder was definitely more of a ball ache to assemble. Uh, even looking at images on the original files page, I had all the bits printed off and I was just like, what? the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Is, is this that? Does that go there? Is this here? I don't know. And I couldn't really figure out where everything went, so I pretty much just eyeballed it. It looks fine in the end result. 
The skinks from Lost Kingdom miniatures were an absolute breeze to assemble, but because I scaled these down a little bit in the software to match my other skinks, they came out more fragile than probably was intended by the manufacturer. I managed to break one of their arms and thankfully I scaled them just to the right size that an old Games Workshop spear arm did fit them. But these are still very nice, cool multi-part skink kits and offer more diversity than the original first party ones. I'm using standard grade milliput here which is the green and the white two-part epoxy. My usual method is to cram every nook and cranny and big nook and cranny in this case. Push it in as far as it will go. That's gonna make the model more secure, more rigid in the future when it cures. And then after this stage, I take a stiff wet brush and kind of mash, mush, and just pulverize the material until it's pretty much flat with the rest of the surface. It's easy at this stage to look at it and think, uh, that, that's gonna be garbage, that ain't gonna fucking work. And then you can just sink hours and hours and hours of time into just a pointless venture. Uh, never make a judgment on this until you've hit it with a primer, which, you know, some people see the primer as like, oh, it, it's over, we've moved on, we can't go back. You can absolutely add more. You, you can hack it out if you really wanna do that. But most importantly, you can just add more to this, no problem. I've added some 3D printed posts. These were part of the Howder kit. I don't know exactly what they're supposed to be. And I've also used some of the clipped off support scraps. These are gonna be for the posts, for the vines, the vine ropes to bind the Howder to the body, or at least cosmetically so. And because I clipped off the Tarask's top armor plate spikes, I'm going to hide this somewhat with some classic 90s Lizardman shields, which still look pretty funky, and a couple of Sora shields that are going to be put in there. It's going to look a little bit like armor plating, but mostly it is there to cover all manner of sins. <laughs> On to the cotton. Now, considering I am dreading the day that I have to do the rigging on my Black Sea ships, this was a bit of a primer for that because this, this is awful. This, this is uh, awfully fiddly, awful during the whole process, just awful, 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 but with amazing results. The, the, the end result is beautiful on this stuff. I loop these over the posts with some glue and wrap it round, make it nice and thick, and then go underneath the dinosaur, loop it round the opposite post, secure with glue again, loop it under, repeat the process under, over, under, over, sort of thing. You get the idea. And just haphazardly kind of make this work. It was absolutely here that my big fat fucking head got in the way and ruined everything on what is supposed to be my best video yet. I'll figure it out for the second one when I do a T-Rex. T-Rex is better than Stegosaurs anyway, that's all just, just common knowledge. Bigger, badder, sexier. So here is the actual recipe for the skinks that I did. I used this for pretty much all my Seraphon. My Shades by Proxigod Warband were pretty much just this method. It's quick, easy, and painless. So prime them white. Then use a one-to-one -one mix of Koalia Green Shade, Koala? Koalia Green Shade and water, just water. Cover the whole thing in this. Which happened? Then I used green ink on the hard scales, the armor plating, the, the fins on their heads, anything that is on their back essentially. We're going light to dark, working up. Then I used Vallejo Dark Aluminium on some of the bangles, some of the weapons. I used Vallejo Liquid Gold on some of the other trimmings and especially on the shield lining. I used Contrast Flesh Terrors Red on the shields themselves. Vallejo Liquid Copper on the weapon tips. Rakarth Flesh on any bone decorations and any of the creature's claws. Rhinox Hide on the bows, especially the leather bindings where I assume they were. And I used Xandri Dust on their little belts. GW ones don't, but these guys had loincloths and I used Avalon Sunset and covered it with Fugan Orange Wash. To break up some of the dark aluminium, 
sepia ink to tint it brass. For finishing touches, I add a mixture of different kinds of inks on the feathers and moot green for the eyes. After some experimentation, I decided what works best with this colour scheme is army paint or soft tone over the entire thing. And that's it. Nice and simple. They took maybe an hour to do. Get yourself a hairdryer. 45 minutes. Now get out of here! Now I'm remembering back to something that I was doing on my Dreadsorian proxy. Not cheaping out, I do have a Dreadsorian, I just wanted to run two. And it was the Dreadsorian proxy that was built around the Lord of the Rings War Mummock. This was before the Facebook Seraphon community just bent over and took a massive shit on it and basically said intergalactic space frogs that imagine all of their friends can't be friends with elephants or jaguars or any other aesthetically contextually appropriate jungle creatures because that's unrealistic. Space frogs. Holy, 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 holy. Twats. Where was I? Ivory. Ivory. Now the ivory on this guy was kind of what I looked at in pictures. Like it, it's a light bone colour with uh, a hint of red in there and also it's kind of gone black at the tips. I have no idea whether this is something that happens after the fact where it's been taken off. But it looked really pretty and I wanted to take the idea, gloss it up real nice so I'm going to apply it to this as well. I'm first coating everything in Rakar Flesh which does turn out to be a bad idea. Not the colour itself but the order in which I did things. So I then start again and airbrush the entire thing with a really dark grey. This is Athracite grey from Vallejo. Then I almost Zenithal highlight the Rakarth flesh on top of it. This gives a nice bit of undershading to the, you know, the underneath of the armor plates. It means I don't need to go in later with a dark wash and painstakingly try and create the illusion of light. This is done in a few minutes. Then dry brush back from the edges with pure black. This is to get that weird effect that is on ivory. Made sure to get all the imperfections, all the little ridges to bring out the detail. This model was so much more than I could see before I dry brushed it. Then I add Reikland Flesh Shade just to add a little bit of what feels like blood circulating through those parts. After faffing around with the airbrush for maybe a couple of hours and finally getting stuff right, I wasn't really in the mood to airbrush the skin tones, so I just slapped on some army paint a soft tone. Well, fuck, okay. Uh, that worked. That's working fine, okay. The areas where I overran with the airbrush uh, did leave a nice natural gradient of Rakar flesh and dark grey. So you have a little bit there, almost deliberate looking intent. Uh, but the, the wash brings it all together so nicely. And naturally the only part of this model that people are genuinely asking me about online is how I did the skin tone. I dry brush the extreme ridges of the armor plating with rack white. Really no need to do this, I was just kind of testing it out and then it was kind of on there at that point. So I just finished it. It looked probably alright without it. The shields underneath were just painted with corn red and then I mixed that with an orange and then used that as a basic highlight. That's very, very simple stuff. On to the first of our gold tones. This is Vallejo Liquid Gold. I don't know what this stuff is. I don't know what it's made of, but it destroys paintbrushes and it smells a little bit funky. Use a cheap brush and slap it on. Next up I'm using copper from the same liquid metal series. This is the bulk of the howder and also the jungle throne. Now the areas on the top deck that I wanted to have a really popping candy ink colour. I first started with dark aluminium from Vallejo, 
not bright enough, I then went to light aluminium from Vallejo, which is so white that it is almost not a metallic. I think I will step down for the next time I try this and use a silver or steel from their series. I also made sure to hit any jewels or decorative reliefs with this paint. I tried applying inks to the flat surfaces numerous times and there's always brush strokes and it never looks quite right and it's thicker in places than other and eventually went back to the airbrush because I can tidy the gold up later. And airbrushing out an even coat, blue and red, absolutely no problem. This is going to look great later on. And since everything is going to be kind of earthy colours, fairly muted and brought down with a shade later, I figured I would use contrasting colours here, the red and the blue, to really draw attention to the top deck, what's going on, and when the skinks are on there later, it's going to be busy. It's going to draw the eye up to the top, which is really cool. And of course, just touch up the gold afterwards. I'm not sure if Workshop still make these or not, but these are technical paints like Waystone Green, I think they're called, uh, Soulstone Blue. They're absolutely fucking awesome for this kind of thing. If you just take a little bit straight out of the pot and you dab it on, the metallic area that you want to be a gemstone. It's great. Next I'm going on to my metallic paints from Green Stuff World. This is Caesar Red I think and something something green. It's like a turquoisey teal maybe. I'm using these to block paint large areas where I can't be bothered to go in with the airbrush again and then tidy up. Lowest level of the howder is being painted grey. I don't know what material it is, but it is it is grey material. It's going to be grey. Poles and totems have been painted with dark aluminium on this model, which, you know, if you don't know by now, this is my absolute go-to paint. It's so easy to tint it different colours, different shades, make it into different materials later on. Uh, check out the speed painting tutorial that I did last week because that is, is two hours of just using this material to its, it, its best, its full potential, it's great. She is looking pretty pissed. I would absolutely be pissed off if this thing was on my back as well. It is hideous and gaudy and she could be on drag race with this shit. picked out any wood or log parts on the howder with goth or brown. It's a nice light brown. I don't want to be highlighting this stuff later, so I'm just going to bring it down with a shade. That's how I like to do things when I'm in a rush. I've used an off-white paint for the vines. I'm going to contrast these later on. Nice and simple. You don't need to cover them all. It makes it more interesting if you don't trust me. While this was drying, I did hit the dark aluminium areas with some sepia inks in places just to break it up and give it a brass coppery look. Moving back to the vines, I used Agaras Dunes contrast paint. Again, you don't need to get this everywhere. This is going to be darker in some places anyway where you didn't hit it with the off-white. Just slather it on and the end result that I got from various airbrush layers, various paints hitting it. It just looks pretty interesting, like very jungle vines, probably wood. It's your frog. Good old frog. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, didn't see you there. My name's Tony, and I'm here to talk to you about the MS Paints Patreon. Right now, you can join Patreon for as little as three bucks a month, and you can get all kinds of benefits, like joining the MS Paints Ewok Family Village on Facebook. You can vote on current projects and upcoming projects, see work in progress pictures, and also get little tips and tricks by messaging us directly. MS Paints is aiming to be the premium platform for people who want to enjoy the hobby despite their additional needs. If you can't do that, just give us a like and a subscribe on the YouTubes and also give us a following on the Facebook. All right, Tony out. That's your frog. Talent in a bottle time. It's army paint a soft tone. And this stuff along with strong tone is just fucking awesome. And based on what you're doing it over, it's hard to tell what it's actually going to do sometimes, which makes it a little bit spicy. I was a little bit scared putting this on, but I did. 
all of the copper and gold with this. The entire howder got bathed with this stuff. Some metals I left, others I didn't. I'll leave that up to your discretion. But gold mixed with gloss on this stuff adds a really nice non-metallic metal effect almost. Now I've neglected some parts of the creature, I just kind of forgot that they were there like the mouth needed doing, so I went back and I went in there with a purple ink. Not the best idea I should have gone in with, maybe a purple contrast or really watered this down because I lost a lot of detail in there. There's more detail in this mouth than I could ever paint at my skill level. So I should have just gone in with something really light and let the, the natural primer colour bring those up. I worked a little bit of this up into the gums and the sides of the mouth and then I touched up the teeth with Rakar Flesh again. Rakar Flesh is just an awesome kind of cool tone that's a little bit different from the regular bone colours and again I use it as a basis for ivory stuff. Do the claws of the creature in this as well. Again we're going to go with Reichland Flesh Shade just to add a little bit more tone and life and blood into these areas. Not like blood gore blood but like blood that is flowing through parts of the body sort of thing. And you can bring these up with just something that's slightly off-white. I'm aware I won't be dry brushing any of the metallics, I think there's so much going on with this model that trying to make everything pop with dry brushes and highlights will absolutely be fucking disgusting. I think that'd be even more gaudy and hideous than it is. So I'm just gonna edge highlight a couple of areas on the howder just to draw attention and that is pretty much it. Anywhere that I use the light aluminium and then the inks and any of the technical paints from Games Workshop, I'm adding a little bit of gloss varnish to how the final varnish affects the end product. It's something to think about. If you're using specifically matte paints, you have to think, well, why did I get those paints? Why am I using them? And then if I'm going to end on a satin varnish, what is the fucking point? And there's also paints I use for their technical properties like Green Stuff World Quicksilver with their brand of inks over the top. And if I use a matte varnish or a satin varnish, I completely nullify the point of doing that. So it's something that you need to kind of think about. And it can be easy to get some nice cheap effects out of this. From a distance, I've got models that look like non-metallic metal and I've spent days painting them. When really, it's just gloss varnish. And I did the base off camera. Once I've refined that process and made something more interesting looking, I will be doing a Seraphon jungle base tutorial. And I stuck the skink crew on. Some of them wouldn't fit very well, so I put them on the base. Yeah, just kind of like, it's, it's a nice little, almost Kings of War idea that you've got a little diorama base just moving forward. It looks really cool. There she is, Mama Pia Grande. She's turned out better than I thought she would, given there's maybe three to four different printed kits in here. And there's also just bits kit bashed from my spares box. I think she's pretty awesome. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>